All right, now that we've got all the setup out of the way, we can get started with the command line utility. So at this point, we should have it installed, up to date, um, and be able to invoke it from our terminals. So the first command that we're going to cover is npm init. And init creates a, a package.json file. So for those that haven't used npm before, maybe you've been on GitHub and you've seen that a lot of projects have this little thing called package.json, and inside is this JSON object with like uh, the author's name, the app URL, what packages it has, and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new folder called init, and I'm going to cd into it. Um, so we've got nothing going on in here right now. I'm going to run npm init. And what this is going to do is it's going to start this <clears throat> interactive uh, kind of survey where it asks you, like, what's the project name that you're making? And you can type whatever you want. What version does it start off as? So maybe it starts off as 0 .0 0.0.1. Uh, a description, you know, it does something. An entry point. So this will be when you run, like, node run uh, or node npm start. What does it look for? Um, so we can call it maybe app.js. Uh, test command, we can leave that maybe blank. A Git repository. Uh, this is cool because if you already have, like, a, if you have a GitHub project and you pull it down and then you run npm init on it, it'll be smart enough to autofill this in. Um, so we can leave that blank. Some keywords. This would be if we wanted to put it up on the uh, npmjs.com site. We could type in, you know, like uh, package manager tutorial or something like that. Author, put me, John Cooperman. And what license is it under? Put MIT. So now it's going to give you back this JSON blob, and it's telling you, I'm about to write this to this path here. Does this look OK? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And now we can see, if we ls again, that we do, in fact, have this package.json. If we go ahead and open it up, it's just an object with all of the questions that we answered. Um, one of the other cool things is that from now on, when you install packages, since you have a package.json, it'll kind of keep uh, track of every package you've installed. And that's nice because it allows you to share your application without having to tell people, you know, specifically what apps they install. Um, I'll go ahead and just show that. We will cover install in a separate video. So if I did something like npm install express, and if I just do this, it'll not say do it. But if I do dash dash save, it'll go ahead and not only will it download the express package, but it'll actually write to my package.json file. So if we go ahead and open it up again, we can see now that there's this <clears throat> key in the object called dependencies, and express is one of those. So as you're doing node development, it's important to keep track of all of your dependencies because um, you'll want to be able to share the project. So that's done. The last thing that I wanted to cover, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to remove node modules. It's actually a folder. And I'm going to remove package.json. So let's go ahead and we're back to nothing here. Is if you're just working on something and you really don't want to, either you don't have the information or you don't want to be bothered with all of it, uh, npm init accepts a flag that'll let you just basically say yes to everything. Um, so you can do npm init. And then you have a couple of options. You can do dash f. These are all. Um, symbolically the same. You can do dash dash force. You can do dash y like for yes or dash dash yes. So you can type any of those in and it'll go ahead and build that package.json. Won't ask you any questions and it'll just save it totally blank like this. Uh, hope that helps.